quite quickly to find the center. I measure this distance from here to here, it's 15. Okay, so that would make it seven and a half. So right, oops, slid on me. 15, seven and a half would be right there. Now this, I know this is gonna be cut out so I can make my mark a little thicker. I'm gonna find the center this way and it's six. So it would be three. Do the same thing down here. It's five, so it's two and a half. So I can take and lay a line from there to there, but all I need is the center point. If you notice, it's not quite there. So right there's my center. And it intersects with this line right here, so that's my center. That's where I'm going to put my bit to start. All right, so that'll be zero, zero, zero. Zero this way, zero this way, and zero this way. All right, and when I laid it out, it's laid out this way in relationship to the machine. So I've got to mount it that way. That's the next step. All right, what I did before, if you remember, is I put a mark there to find the center from here to here. So I've got the center in this direction. What I'm trying to do is align this ellipse so it's not twisted like this. So I've got another mark in the center down here. So I'm gonna run the x-axis that way and then I can move this left and up and down, if you will, so it works. It's up and down on your screen. It's not up and down here. So I'll move it this way, which is X to the left. I'm on slow, so I'll kick it up to high. And I can see this one needs to be moved. Now this is kind of stationary right there, so I'll move this one just a little bit like that. Now I'll capture it in place by putting a board across here. Okay, what I'm going to do now is trap this in, push down on it, and the force will be enough it keeps this thing from moving. So it's like a clamp, but it's a little bit different from a clamp. And I don't know if you can see it or not, but it raised it up on this end because it's pinching it in place. Now I'll add another one across here. And if you remember when we designed this, uh, it's 13 inches. So I need six and a half before I hit this. So it looks like I gotta move that one a little bit. And this one is fine, it's seven inches. So this one's gonna have to be moved out a little bit. All right, it's still trapped in place, and now I measure it again to make sure that I've got six and a half, and I do, and that gives me enough clearance for the spindle as well. So I'll move it over and zero it out. Okay, right about there, center. Now you can see the X from there. So I've got to slow it down. All right, that's pretty close to center. Now I'm going to use the paper to find the zero. Keep in mind, you move it, you keep coming down slowly until it traps like that, so that's zero. And I said I'd show you how to do this, so let me move this. So I've got it trapped, so what I'm going to do is go, see it right here? It's zero, X, Y, and Z. Okay, and they all go to zero. So that's my zero, zero reference point. And I'm gonna bring it up so I can get my paper out of the way, obviously. 
you want to get it off the material so you can start your spindle as well. So next, start the spindle. Before I do that though, I'm going to look at the program. Loon Oval, 14 by 6, remember? Tells when it was created. There you go, next. I'm not going to use virtual zero because this has been playing nice and flat. I'm going to start it slow just so I can pause it. But let me hit the start on the spindle. It's always nice to have your spindle running before you start it. And the spindle is a lot quieter than routers. That's one of the reasons I went to spindles. They also last a lot longer than your router does. And it's not that much more money. It's a little bit more money, but when you consider how quick routers wear out. Because routers are, are not designed to be used like this could take an hour or two hours. Routers aren't really designed to be ran that often. Let's start it. And it waits about eight seconds and that's for your spindle to get up to speed because it's designed to send the information out on that. All right, there it goes. I'll pull this out of the way. All right, let's take a look close up, see how it looks. Come on over. Yeah, I think you can see it. See the loon here? It's the head case. There's trees over here and trees over there. In the trees. And some more here. So there's still some hand sanding to be done, but it's better than it was. That's it. I think I need a new bit. I think that's one of the reasons it was uh, leaving so many fringes. Because that one's carved quite a few things. So we'll try it again with another one. But it turned out pretty good. So remember, have fun with your CNC. Final results. What we'll do is kind of scan it so you can see it. It's been oiled. Tongue oil and then it'll be varnished after that dries and soaks into the wood so you can see it there it is like i said many times have fun with your cnc